All right. Uh, good morning, folks. Um, uh, it's I've inexplicably got up this morning at like 20 to 6, which is totally not me. It's Sunday and I'm normally still asleep till much later. For some reason, I got up early. So um, I thought I'd come in here and pff, there's nothing on telly. There's nothing to do. You know, nothing's open. Uh, it's sunny out, but it's kind of, eh, you know, what what to do. So I thought I'd just come in and talk, talk to the camera. Um, I did a bit of I wanted to talk today, I suppose, about, you know, my experiences of what it's kind of like to be gay. I guess I don't know if you guys or obviously all my friends know this, but I don't know if someone who's watching it who I've never met, don't know if you knew that. I can't see why you wouldn't have known that, <laughs> you know, um, but in my life, I've had a lot of a lot of people who've been like, oh, we didn't realize you were gay. I mean, it's usually not an issue for people, but that it's, it's never, you know, it's, it, for some reason, I just think well obviously like look at me and listen to me <laughs> but not everyone gets that so anyway um I, I am a gay male that's how i identify and all of these kind of things and have since like i was a for as long as i can remember even thinking sexy thoughts you know they were never about a woman and that wasn't for any that wasn't nurture and all of those things and i don't know if it was nature or genetic memory or whatever i don't know all i know is that from as soon as i could start thinking about those sorts of things i was thinking about men i was thinking about cock you know let's let's be honest so it, it's kind of like um for me being gay has just always been who I am and it's not, you know, it's certainly was something that it was not okay to be where I grew up when I grew up, of course. Um, and again, because of media, because of persecution, because of all of those things, you know, obviously I was terrified as a kid of being found out of being gay to the point when if like I actively bullied people who were, you know what I mean? Not like as in beat the shit out of somebody, but just oh man some horrible sort of mental shit and just man they were so fucking amazing and strong and brave and i was a complete and utter asshole because because i just was so terrified of people finding out because even in my own family you know it was joked about you know it was always joked about in the media in day-to-day -day conversations or it was just a generic um insult uh, to people, oh, fucking faggot, you know, what would you know about, are you fucking faggot, are you pufta? And I was so scared all the time that they were going to find out I was a faggot and I was a pufta and then I was going to have to listen to that sort of abuse all fucking day. And, you know, and I did have to listen to it, but I, you know, at least it wasn't because they knew it, it was just because they were saying it, you know what I mean? It was, it was pretty fucked up. And it's a terrible way to grow up, and it's something that everybody in the world needs to fucking stop doing. Because, geez, I mean, if if you're telling, if a, if a kid feels they can't even just be themselves, you know, if it's like a, a sin, which is just like sin, or if it's like even just like joking about it, hey, you faggot, faggot, you know, I mean, that actually does hurt uh, the soul of a vulnerable young kid. Trust me, and hopefully kids are stronger these days, but I know it affected me daily and it affected everything about my life from then on. But I don't think, obviously I don't think there's anything to be ashamed about for being born gay or born yourself or even, may, I've never known anyone to do this, but if you make a decision to maybe explore that side of yourself, um, there's nothing wrong with any of that. Like, it's just, it's just you. Like, it's just you exploring who you are and, you know, if you've never, never once, if you're suppressing even the thought of kind of um, exploring that, who are you? Like, you know what I mean? Who are you? Who, who, are, who are you trying to be? Are you trying to be somebody? Like, and and for whom, really? Um, but look, anyway, being being gay and growing up that way was obviously difficult. Um, but these days I'm open about it to everybody. I don't see any point, you know, I, I it's not going to affect my work. If someone doesn't agree with me, I, I don't have, I'm not affiliated with sort of anything that's going to, you know, it's not going to do me any harm to say that the only thing would be an actual attack, you know, but, uh, but other than that, it's like, you know, it's just who I am. Um, but I, I guess kind of how I've seen how I see being gay now is kind of like such a small part of who I am. It's such a tiny, tiny little bit of me. And it, 
it it's not uh, it's another little box you know it's these these categorizations that are that are ways to kind of just say this is who this person is this is how i deal with that you know it's it's what what everybody does it's what you know it's how it, it's quant it's just quantify it you know just put it in a box and label it and then you can understand it you know um but it's not that simple everybody knows that everybody knows that they cannot be defined by absolutes the absolutes of a spectrum you know people think of a spectrum here here to here kind of thing they think of it as as in this this line here and this line here are the only things that define a spectrum but the spectrum is everything else in between you know the spectrum is that and those things it's not sorry i can't get this lined up <laughs> those things you know it's not that that is not how you define this okay they're just the ends of a spectrum right a very large complex and beautiful and who knows what could be going on in this rectangle and it probably isn't even a rectangle spectrum like it's it's just crazy to think that people would would set their life up to only see these little slivers of what what the experience of life is right because ultimately it isn't. It's the spectrum. So wherever you fit in that spectrum, and even if you don't fit in that spectrum, even if you're like, what is this spectrum? At least acknowledge that a spectrum isn't the polar opposites. That doesn't, that's not the only thing that defines a spectrum. And unfortunately, a lot of people who, who find it difficult to um, think about, about these concepts or about the, all of the sometimes scarily infinite possibilities within those boundaries in a way. Obviously not, how can it be infinite if it's in boundaries? <laughs> infinite finity. <laughs> um, no, it's kind of uh, like don't, don't sort of like place yourself at one end and then only look at what's at the other end and think it's the opposite of you and like keep it away from me kind of thing because there's so much in between and you don't have to do that. You don't have to put yourself at either end of that spectrum. Just like find out where you are in that spectrum and don't be fucking ashamed of it. You know, we're so always told to be ashamed. Be ashamed of who you are. Be ashamed of that. Be ashamed. Be ashamed. And it, <laughs> so why would someone do that to you? I've always thought it's because A, obviously they're insecure and they've got some... They're, they're fucked in the head because why else would you want to control other people but it's it's a power and control thing really it's in order like putting you in a box and in some cases literally into like a cell or a you know a prison cell i mean or like sometimes literally boxes is a way of for them to kind of deal with how like how they see it how how they need to see it in order to function as a human being but really come on my sexuality is like I, I, the only time I ever think about it is if I see a cute guy or something, or, you know, if I see how gay culture or whatever is being represented in the media really unfairly or, or whatever, if I see injustice about these sorts of things, that's the only real time I ever kind of think about my sexuality. I don't wake up in the morning and think, I'm going to put on some amazing music and like totally have a good time because like, I'm so, so gay because you know, if you are, that's cool. <laughs> if that's who you are, go for it. But it's certainly not who I am, and it's certainly not who I've ever been. There are so many more things in life that have affected who I am as a human being, as a man, as an entity. There's all those things that really don't have anything to do with my sexuality. They don't have anything to do with sex. You know, I mean, sex, yawn. <laughs> you can't, the topic of sex, like, yawn, we get it, like, come on, um, everything's about sex, isn't it, oh, for fuck's sake, like, I'll, I'll discuss that in another one, um, but really, it's a small part of who I am, and for a lot of people, it's a small part of who, and for some people, it's an important part, something that they're, that they're exploring, that they're proud of, and all of those things, but again, all of that, all of how, how we feel about, um, homosexuality is, it's a spectrum, like it's just exploration, it's understanding, and yes, there's a lot of people who would hate you for it, um, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who right now would be hating me, not, not even having met me, just the concept of me is enough for them to be like, who is this, like kill it, you know, kill it with fire, um, but if, it means very little to me and it really should mean very little to everybody else. You know, bef before I came on here, I sort of thought I'd better get online and come up with some, you know, look at some facts and look at some figures to, I suppose, 
the things that I've sort of seen on the on the, the, when I gather information on the web or whatever, I don't necessarily source it with like you know, all of the details of where I got it from, but it does go in and it formulates who you are and all of the other people's opinions and your opinions, they coalesce into effectively you. And what what sort of, I, I went online to, to look up facts to back that up, you know, and it's kind of like, well, why do I need to back that up really? That's just, I guess I kind of thought that, you know, in order to kind of, uh, stop the you know, to have a counter argument to stop stop the attacks in a way, but uh, and also because there are some pretty relevant things you know to this topic that are happening in the world today, which are kind of terrible at least on a on an equality level of a basic human decency level are pretty terrible and obviously one of those is going to be marriage equality, um, which is a pretty good term for it. You know, it, it's kind of it shouldn't really be marriage equality. It is just equality, you know, and it, it's equal representation under the law, really, because I think a lot of the reason people get so worked up about this this topic is the definition of marriage. And often they're coming from a place where the defini definition of marriage is a, is a sacrament, a religious sacrament, when by law, it isn't only that. It can be that. But of course, by law, it isn't because there are plenty of people in the world who are not religious or, or you know, there are certain things, obviously, they're going to say that are still, like, not acceptable, like polygamy, which really, like, I don't know how I feel like about that because if someone wants to marry tons of people and everyone's involved, everyone who's involved in that situation is cool and consenting and it's, I mean, what harm does it really do? Like, really? I, I can't see what harm it would do. Well, then what's the problem? The argument that if you allow people to marry, if you allow people to marry, like a guy to marry a guy and a chick to marry a chick, well, what's going to stop people from, like, wanting to marry a dog, you know? Or, like, marry a tree. Like, it, it's the same thing. It isn't. <laughs> A tree isn't a consenting adult. A dog isn't a consenting adult. And shit, if you marry a tree, that's fine as long as, you know, you're not just marrying it because of the knot hole. <laughs> if you want to marry a dog, do it. Just don't consummate that marriage, motherfucker. <laughs> you know, what? what's... The, the, anyway, let's not talk about those things. But there are certain things, obviously, that they're not going to, at this stage in history, think is okay. But I don't think that marriage between two consenting adults, a marriage which effectively isn't going to harm anybody, or it's not going to harm your beliefs, they're your beliefs. What what anybody else in the world does isn't actually going to affect your beliefs because they're yours. Like, how could it? It's not like you're going to look at, look at it and, like, even if you change your mind about it, that's your mind. That's your decision to change your mind. It's it's not like someone is grabbing you by the throat saying, ah, stop believing what you believe. Believe what I believe. It's not that. It's just kind of basic common sense that adult human beings who are consenting should be able to get married. I mean, come on. Come on. Um, yeah, I, there, there just isn't. I'm not equal in my own country. I'm not, man. I'm not. I mean, when we when we moved to Australia as a couple, we had to get an interdependency visa, which was a different form of visa than any sort of straight de facto couple got. And it, okay, that in itself is weird. Like, why? But not only that, it cost more. Like, it actually cost us more at the time to get an interdependency visa than it would have cost just to get a de facto visa. And they were effectively the same thing. And even if they weren't, why were they, why was I considered different? Why was my relationship with, with a man considered any less valid or, or, or than, than, than anybody else's relationship? You know, all relationships are different. You cannot quantify relationships of all things in the world that do not that are not the polar extremes, <laughs> relationships are them. I mean, how could you even remotely try to quantify the reactions, like interactions between two or more people? It's virtually inf infinite how, how you could perceive that. It is virtually infinite, obviously within a finite system, but it's still virtual. Like there's a, in this screen, what, 720 pixels or something, um, Imagine instead of 720 pixels, it's like seven 
bazillion you know, possible possible spots are there that you could that you could sort of focus on. I mean, it's crazy. Come on, it's 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 it is actually really unquantifiable, and it's certainly most people don't understand relationships. I mean, why do you think so many of them just end in failure, <laughs> like it end in just like anger and disruption and divorce? <laughs> You know, um, but look, we are everybody in in a in a democracy should be protected and cared for exactly the same. That is what a democracy is. It is equal representation for every citizen. And you know what? It's also equal represent. It should be equal representation and care for every other person who isn't even in a democracy. It should be equal concern for every single human being. Even the friggin' earth, every animal, equal consideration for all of it, you know, the universe. It, we're just a small part of it, so we should just consider that we are, that, that, that all is, you know, and all deserves to be. And I think every single person, gay, straight, whatever, they're valid, you know. Some might be dicks, some might be a pain in the ass, some might be criminals, some might be whatever. But everybody's at least valid and should at least be regarded under the law and under in democracy, in the world, in general, outside of even political structures, as just equal. Like, it's such an obvious concept. It's one that people have had to burn, burn the streets of cities for. It's ones that news media has had to fall to you know it's just basic basic that is like so fundamental that just treat everybody the same and if you don't treat somebody with respect okay but don't don't selectively do that you know what i mean you can be an ass but don't just be an ass to like just don't just target one group that annoys you or maybe highlight something about yourself that you don't like which I shall get into because, you know, let's face it, in my in my experience and actually my personal experience, a lot of hatred towards gay people is coming from people who maybe just need to take a look at themselves. Let me put it that way. They maybe need to stop externalizing some stuff that's going on in there. All right. But look, I did write some things down. I guess I kind of some of the things that are written here in, in kind of like big things is that it's you know, marriage is effectively a, a contract under the law. Um, it's not, it's not, whether you agree with it or not, it's a lawful act. It, it, it shouldn't be based on your, you know, a lot of the people who are against it, it's because of religious reasons. And that's cool. Like, that's your religion. It says you're not allowed to do that. It, like, forbids it and says it's a sin. And, or I mean, that's certainly the way it appears from the Bible, whether or not the Bible is whichever version, let's put it that way, of the Bible you're reading. Um, most of them seem to say that and, and whatever, but that's fine. But but marriage, actually, it it, it supersedes all of that. Like, the, the union between anybody throughout history, and there have been gay instances of gay marriage in history, even though, obviously, they're not going to tell you about that. But there are, you know, come on, there, there has to have been. Um, and I've certainly seen evidence of it on a few articles and stuff. Can't think of it right now, but... Even in, in religious iconography, there are, there are examples of images of two men who've got married, say. Um, but where was I going with this? Uh, boo, 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 boo. Um, hmm. Okay, well, I'll skip that. But another thing is that, you know, a vast majority of people in Australia right now actually kind of support it. And... It's taken a while, I suppose, but it, it's kind of pretty indicative of the government of the time um, that it's so unwilling, really, just to listen to the to the facts. You know, they're, they're so interested in polls and surveys when it when it kind of uh, backs up whatever their agenda is. But as soon as it's kind of not a part of their agenda, it's like, oh, well, we'll just ignore it. You know, the very evidence we've been using to kind of sway you to our way of thinking hang on, that evidence is now pointing in the other direction. Eh, eh, doesn't exist. Sweep it away. Nah, nah, what would polls know? You, you probably just interviewed the gay ones. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, it's undeniable that over 65%, according to a lot of polls, anywhere between this and that, depending on age brackets, um, at least over half of the people of Australia are accepting of the concept of gay marriage. And like, 
three quarters of them want it to go to, to a vote. Um, you know, a plebiscite isn't a vote. I just want to point out this a, a yes, no box tick, carefully worded question um, is not, that's not democracy. It isn't like, um, here are your two options, A and B. Yeah, but I kind of wanted to discuss C. No, nah, it's A or B. A or fucking B. You with us or against us? A or B, black or white? Spectrum. <laughs> Spectrum. Nothing in between. Nothing. I don't want to know what you're thinking. I just want you to say whether you yes or bloody no. Yes or bloody no. Why can't you say that? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Why can't you be clear, as clear about it as I am? I know what I'm doing. Why don't you know what you're doing? Well, we do know what you're doing. You're trying to word it in a way or, or put it out there in a way which has the best chance for you to cling on to your, your beliefs um, and make it law, you know, effectively. But 75% of the people at least want it to go to vote. 65% of the people like it. And and between the age bracket of like uh, a, yeah, like 18 and 24, something like that, like it's up to 85% of people support gay marriage. You know, three quarters of Australia thinks it's inevitable. So it's kind of like, if that many people are saying, yeah, let's do it. Well, like, why isn't the government at least putting it to a, to a vote or at least gleaning the information from people as to why or, you know, what? I mean, I, I think personally, it's like the only reason I can think that they don't want to do that is because of influence, because of personal beliefs. Um, and, you know, pretty obvious ones, uh, because... You know, there isn't really a separate separation in Australia between church and state. There isn't really. Um, visibly, it seems that way, I suppose. But, you know, you just have to look at the belief systems of the people who are in power to kind of realise that maybe, maybe that's not true. Um, uh, well, obviously, uh, Tony Abbott was pretty friggin' devout, you know what I mean? Um, not that there's anything wrong with that, but... but it's kind of not necessarily representative of everybody in Australia. And and come on, it's time um, to just at least catch up with the rest of the world or how the world's thinking because really, or just how most people think, you know, because that's what democracy is, is kind of adhering to what most people think. Flawed system, of course. Um, it's still, to some degree, only focusing on, you know, a certain amount of the spectrum, but, but it's okay. You know, it's kind of... Um, I, it's what we've got. It's what we've got. And, you know, it, it's funny how people are so willing to fight for it and defend it. And yet, and then on a daily level, ignore it. Um, but that's the way it is, man. Come on, e equality for all. And, um, I'll talk about sort of what it's like, like, there's a lot of hilarious things about gay culture and the way it's portrayed in the media and how gay people even portray themselves, um, in a lot of ways, which... I guess that's a big reason why it hasn't been a huge part of my life is because I really don't connect to any of it. Well, a lot of it. I just, it's like, um, like if I was in a club and I was dancing and a song came on and I thought, oh, this is fun and just dance to it, that's fine. But like, it's not like I actively think this is the only thing that's going to make me happy is listening to a, you know, a, a, a cheesy house song with soaring, insert boring lyrics here, kind of, um, uh, chorus it, it's just kind of um i guess I, I i kind of rebelled against the fact that i was sort of told that this is what it means to be gay and you know you're supposed to like this sort of music and you're supposed to support it. and if you don't support it then you, you know what have all those people fought for all those rights that those drag queens fought for started rights over what you're just totally ungrateful because you get to live in a free thing where people don't judge you and and you know how dare you attack and blah, blah, blah. But really, ultimately, it just doesn't speak to me. Um, guys riding around in, in leather, singing songs, you know, people miming to stuff with kind of not really much creativity involved. Um, you know, I've seen some drag shows that have been absolutely fucking amazing, but it's because the people have been really talented. And let's face it, a lot of what's made in the name of gay culture is not based on talent. <laughs> it's not. It's based on people wanting to express themselves and needing to and all that. That's fine. But a lot of it is really atrocious. It's really atrocious. I mean, we used to really lead lead um, the world in, oh, not the world, lead culture, you know, lead, certainly dance culture, you know, all of that kind of was, was kind of like 
voguing and stuff, all this kind of stuff. It was like pioneering stuff in, in its own way. And, and the straight media would go, oh, yeah, that's great. Latch onto that and, and whatever. But now it's kind of like we're so far behind what's actually awesome and happening in the world. It's so laughably bad sometimes. You, sometimes you go to a Pride event and it's like literally the same song um, that was made 20, 30 years ago, a pop song. And they've kind of like um, tweaked it a bit and put on a really boring, basic new backing track or something. And and you're supposed to kind of throw your hands up in the air and sort of run out and go, I know this Whitney song, I'm totally going to dance this. Yeah, I'm going to dance for tomorrow. <laughs> it's kind of like, yeah, okay. Like, that's fun. if you like it, that's fun. But it certainly doesn't speak to me. Um, there's plenty more music in the world that I think, not that there's anything wrong with that song. I mean, she was amazing and all of those things. But but ultimately, it's kind of, you know, that that was of a time and it, it's kind of seems really strange that you're trying to sort of peddle this music from 30 years ago to the to the next generation and of of kids who are just like so disconnected to it or whatever you know it doesn't really mean anything to them they're like oh yeah okay here's some music that my parents used to listen to or whatever you know really it's it's that silly and um it's kind of like uh i feel disconnected really from a lot of gay culture i support it and and um support people's right to it and i support um, a lot about it and it's changing. It's definitely changing. I'm seeing a lot of people getting up and saying things, you know, and, and doing interesting new things. And that's when I'm excited again about gay culture is when I'm like, oh, wow, that's, they're saying stuff, you know, and, and we need to be saying stuff um, that's new and fresh and relevant to today. And I guess that's my main complaint with, with the notion of gay culture is it's so based on things that happened 20, 30 years ago. And rightfully so, they were important things, very important things. And I wouldn't be able to be doing this video even right now. You know, I, I can't make a video like this in many countries of the world, you know what I mean? It's still um, so full on. And so they kind of broke through all that stuff, the persecution and all that, and at least made people aware of it. So I'm so eternally grateful for that. Of course, like who wouldn't be? Um, but I don't feel some sort of strange... Uh, I don't like when people turn that into an obligatory thing, like you have to like like this, um, because uh, ultimately nobody has to like anything, and you can come up with reasons why you think they should, but if they don't, get off their back. Um, it, so that's how I feel about it. Obviously, plenty of other people don't, um, which is cool. I shall talk more about this probably later. I've talked, I, oh my God, 27 minutes. <laughs> I can't post this. Can I? It's going to take so long. <laughs>